Event photographers, today we're going to talk about how to photograph a step and repeat. As an event photographer, unless you're sticking to small family type events, inevitably you'll probably be asked to cover one. This may be as a dedicated photographer stationed at one throughout the night or part of a much larger event like the one we're currently watching. When I first started out as an event photographer, I didn't really have a template available to me on how to do this. I had to figure it all out on my own. So today I'm going to give you guys as much information as possible. Now there is no correct way to photograph one and there are many ways to do it, uh, but there are some pitfalls to be aware of and there are some things you can actually do wrong. So the first thing I recommend is arriving early so that you can fire a few test shots off. At the event we're currently watching, I was able to catch the guy setting up lights and was able to work with him to better position them. He initially had them aimed toward the top of the backdrop, which would have led to uneven light on the subjects, shadows, and no catch light. So, of course, I want to work with the best situation as possible, so we repositioned those lights to give me as close to sort of a 45 degree, 45 degree double light as possible. There was limitations. I couldn't spread the lights out as much as I wanted because as you guys can see, there is a designated area for the lights that were taped off. So next it was time for me to fire a few test shots. What I recommend is using your flash as your key light or main light and using your continuous lights as a fill light. I usually start out by doing test shots without a flash and I dial in a proper exposure for fill lights at about f4, which is what most of my shots will be made at. It kind of covers most groups up to maybe three people. Um, I keep my ISO reasonably high so that my flash won't have to work too hard. And once I've got my continuous lights in, I then turn on my flash and I dial the exposure compensation. You guys have to remember that like your camera when using TTL, your flash is exposing for middle gray, so you need to properly compensate for that. In this particular situation, my backdrop is black and I knew most people would be wearing a darker than middle gray clothing. And so I believe to the best of my recollection, I was at about minus one to minus one and three quarters of a stop to get the proper exposure. Now, whether you bounce your light or use a modifier to diffuse your light, it doesn't really matter much. Um, at this particular event, the rear corner of the room is pretty far from me, from me, so I chose to use a diffuser. It's really important to acknowledge that for larger groups, I do increase my f-stop, and you guys may be wondering how that affects my exposure. Now, if you're using your flash as your key light, it really won't. Your flash is just going to compensate for that change in f-stop. Your ambient light will change. However, I'm pretty much evenly balancing that ambient light. Um, it's very close to my fill light and it doesn't matter significantly. So yes, maybe some of the shadows are a bit darker if I'm increasing my f-stop, but it's not enough to really notice. The only time my consistency will vary significantly is if I get like a large group of people all wearing white in front of a black backdrop and I have my compensation set to like negative one. At that point, a lot of people wearing white with a black backdrop might balance out and I probably would need to change it to zero in order to keep a consistent exposure. Now, I really hate editing, guys. <laughs> I really hate editing. And also, I provide these files at this event live. Uh, not exactly live, but once I'm done with the step and repeat, I quickly hand off JPEG files. And then they actually display those files during dinner on like two large projection screens. So I try not to give them too many choices. I try to give them about three to four images per group. You really don't need more than that. In order to make sure I am able to get all keepers, I'm very mindful, I'm watching everyone in the group, I'm looking for blinks, and on top of that, I do a countdown so that people know when to hold their smile and not blink. So I do a countdown three to four times, I, I politely smile at everyone, I thank them, and then move on. Now there are a few different traditional crops I use depending on the backdrop. If the backdrop has a branding at the top, like the title of the event, I'm mindful to get a shot that includes that. I typically do not do full body shots unless it's called for, such as like at a Hollywood premiere where what people are wearing matter. But this is for a nonprofit event and it's not so much about what people are wearing. It's just getting shots of all the people in attendance. So once in a while, I'll do a full body if it's requested, but typically I'm actually not doing that. 
Now I try to shoot with a neutral perspective and I find I'm a good height for that. I'm not too short for taller groups and I'm not too tall where I'm not able to hunch over and kind of get level with a shorter group. For horizontal shots, I line up my subject's eye one third of the way and I'm always careful not to crop at the hands. That's something you guys have to be really careful of. So you can do sort of like for mid forearm, but avoid cropping at like the fingers and knuckles. Hands are in the shot or they're not typically. Don't get that half and, and half. It's also important to give proper breathing room on the sides of the frame. You don't want claustrophobic compositions. And one thing you might not have considered is that if someone orders an eight by 10 of a tightly framed group, you risk cropping at the shoulder because you're gonna lose that extra space on the edges. The lens and focal length I use depends on where I'm stationed, but 99% of the time I'm shooting with a 24 to 70. I try to keep my focal length as high as possible to avoid distortion on the wide ends, but rarely am I going anything larger or I should say lower. So for example, I only switch to my 17 to 40 if I have a very, very large group and I just can't back out anymore. Uh, in that situation, I often have to do full body. Uh, it's hard to get proper compositions otherwise, but it is what it is, guys. If your group spills outside of your backdrop, it is what it is. I mean, you have no control over that. The flow of the event will definitely depend on the event. At this event, I actually have two helpers that help me kind of guide people through. They'll hold someone's purse if they need that to be held, and uh, they just kind of help traffic move along. But a lot of it is going to be up to you and just smiling, thanking people. Um, I, when it comes to cell phones, yes, you are going to get people asking you to take a cell phone photo. I'll take one if there's no line but I have no problem saying no. If I've got a big line, I'm saying, I'm sorry, these will be made available to you. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny when the images are gonna be made available to them. They are going to be professional, but they still want that cell phone photo. And it is what it is. Luckily, my helpers are usually getting those shots. So I don't have to worry too much about that. Now there's going to be slow periods and there's going to be a rush. There is always a rush. So when I'm usually starting out, it's quite slow for maybe 30 minutes, uh, possibly to an hour, depending on the, the event, of course. Um, but once in a while, I do get the urge to photograph other things and be a roaming photographer at the same time. Usually I'm too busy to do that, but if I am doing that, I'll take advantage of the custom settings in my camera so I can basically program in my step and repeat settings and then change it when I'm doing some roaming photography stuff and then switch it back. So next, let's go into some of the questions I got over on Patreon. Uh, the first one was, how will a setup change as the step and repeat area gets larger? Um, not too, not significantly. Like I said, I'm only changing my lens and I'm sticking with that setup I explained to you guys. As the group gets larger, I am changing the aperture. As I said, I go larger. So maybe for an individual, I'll go to 2.8 so that my flash has a very fast recycling time. And if I'm going to a group of two, I might go to F4. And then maybe a group of three, I go to 5.6. And then it also will depend on how straight your subjects are. So if the group kind of curves a bit, then they're not at the same like focal distance. Um, so it's different. Next, how much space would you need for lighting? Um, Okay, the next question is asking if I ever use a tripod, basically. And the answer is no, because I need to change my height, my perspective. Um, I do understand the urge to want consistency and just go like, well, I want one setting for everything. I'm, I'm going to shoot in manual after I got that down. But the reality is, is something's going to go wrong. Uh, if people are of different heights, you might back up, you might zoom in, you might shoot wider, you're gonna be moving around and you need that versatility of just shooting in TTL, in my opinion. Again, there are different ways to do this and you know, other people might do it a different way. How can you avoid harsh reflections on the backdrop from your flash? That's a good question. Um, I'm mitigating that by just balancing my strobe light with my ambient light. Um, that has been a problem in the past with like a white backdrop when I was first starting out. You know, if you're overexposing or you're shooting one light, you're going to get less problems with that if you are bouncing your light than with like a direct light, for example. Um, 
But with the setup I was using, it was not an issue. Can you just use continuous lights or do I recommend pairing it with a flash? So as I, I've already covered that one. When you have a larger group of people, should you recompose to make sure everyone in the picture is lit? Okay, so this question is about lighting with larger groups. And that's why at the top of the video, I talked about how I would have preferred my light spread out a bit more. That was for the larger groups. I wanted to have a more even spread of my continuous lights. However, it's not really a big issue when you're using your strobe, unless you're shooting extremely wide, that flash has a nice spread and you don't really have to worry about even coverage. How will your setup change when shooting outside versus inside? Uh, it, it can change a lot. If it's outside at night, then I will not be able to bounce flash. I will use a diffuser cap just as I am in this video. Uh, if it's outside during the day and I have good even light, I'll just use that. If my light isn't changing significantly, maybe I'm opening my shutter out up here and there, like as the light dims or gets brighter, if there's some clouds passing through. The only time, the only big difference would be if we are in the middle of the day and we have harsh light and then I'll have to use my flash as a fill light. I'm not, I'm not a fan of doing that, but that's what you have to do in that situation. If you're bouncing light off a ceiling and it's not white, how do you deal with the color cast? Can you MacGyver your way around this? And the answer to that is kind of not really, I mean, you don't want to deal with a, a color cast in your post editing process. And especially if you're delivering the photos right away. So if I had a color cast, I definitely just wouldn't bounce light. Last question, when you're done with the shoot, how quickly do you get your photos to the client? just depends some people need it immediately some people need it within a day and other people are fine with my standard turnaround time my standard turnaround time is about a week i always tell people one week i under promise over deliver so i, I say one week and i try to get it done as fast as possible within a day or two that's not always going to happen and it depends on the type of job. For basic events, I usually do get it done within a day or two, but large things like maybe a bar mitzvah, that could take me a couple of weeks. All right, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. If you guys want to support this channel, you can do so on Patreon or you know, just keep commenting. I really enjoy your comments. I really enjoy helping you guys. So let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys in the next video. And one, two, and three.